This is just another reminder that you should have these class notes printed and be using them with this lecture. If you've decided not to print the notes, please make sure you're writing this down so that you have a set of notes that you can use as a resource to study from and review. So we have about three or four topics we want to cover in this video lecture. The first one is multiplying fractions. I hope that you remember that when you're multiplying fractions, you're just multiplying numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. But of course, I want you to remember this very simple rule that you should simplify before you multiply. Prime factor first. Now, again, I know some of you don't need to prime factor when you're simplifying fractions to multiply, but I would like you to practice prime factoring. So this rule of simplify before you multiply, prime factor first, I think it's an important one. So let's look at that idea of prime factoring first. Our first fraction here is four over nine. Four is two times two. Nine is three times three. And then we have three over eight. Well, three is already prime. So there's our fractions factored. Now we can divide out those common factors. Three is common. This two divides out, this two divides out. In the numerator, we're left with one. In the denominator, six, one by six. Why don't you pause the video, prime factor, simplify, and then multiply these fractions. So we see seven is common, three divides three, three divides three, is that it? What do I have left in the numerator? Two times two times two, all over seven times five, 35. Did you get that? Good. I wanna jump right into dividing fractions because when we divide fractions, we really have to know how to multiply as well. I hope you remember how to do this. When you're dividing fractions, the first fraction stays the same. Dividing turns to multiplying. And then we find the reciprocal of the second fraction. And now we can multiply just like we did in the last question. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Remember that we want to simplify before we multiply. Let's look at this example here. Four over nine stays the same. Dividing changes to multiplication. And now we can prime factors so that we can simplify. Four over nine, 27 over eight. Divide out those common factors. We're left with a final quotient of three over two. Pause your video and divide the next pair of fractions. Make sure you practice your prime factoring.
we have five common, three is common, two factors of two are common. So we're left with 14 over 15. Good. We're going to have to talk now about equivalent fractions. This is important because in our next lecture, we want to be adding and subtracting fractions where we use equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions have that equal there at the front. These are fractions that look different, but have the same value. They are equal fractions. You already know fractions that are equivalent to one half, two over four, four over eight. Oh, let's think of something interesting. 25 over 50, oops, not over 10. Forty-nine over ninety-eight. There's an infinite number of fractions that are equivalent to one half. When we find equivalent fractions, we have to multiply or divide, but usually we multiply the numerator and the denominator. That's important. We're multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So if we look here, I multiplied by two and I multiplied by two. So let's find some equivalent fractions. I know I want to go from a denominator of three to a denominator of 21. So I know that I'm multiplying the denominator and the numerator by seven. Now I'm going from a numerator of seven to a numerator of 56. I'm multiplying the numerator and the denominator by eight. Pause your video and find the following equivalent fractions. In this example, we were dividing the numerator and the denominator. If you had difficulty with those, please go to the homework assignments that you can find in Pearson and practice there. The last thing we wanna talk about here are multiples. Don't confuse these with factors. Remember that factors divide evenly into a number. Multiples are found by multiplying. So when we find the multiples of 12, we have to multiply 12 times one, 12 times two, 12 times three, times four, times five, times six. Pause your video and list the multiples of 18. Now, when we were talking about factors in our first video, we talked about the greatest common factor. Now that we're talking about multiples, we are interested in the lowest common multiple, the LCM. So if we look at the list that we have for the multiples in 12, of 12 and 18, 
we can see the lowest common multiple. Both 12 and 18 divide into 36. They also both divide into 72, but we're interested in the lowest common multiple. How do we use prime factorization so that we don't have to make a list of multiples to find the lowest common multiple? Well, let's look at our example of 12 and 18. We know that 12 can be prime factored 2 squared times 3. 18 is 2 times 3 squared. Let's think about what it means to be a multiple. The multiples of 12 contain 12. 1 times 12, 2 times 12. That means my lowest common multiple needs all of 12. But the multiples of 18 also contain 18. 1 times 18, 2 times 18. What does 18 need? Well, 18 needs a 2. I've already got more than one two, so that's fine. 18 needs two threes. I only have one three here. That means I need two threes. The lowest common multiple, like we already found, is four times nine, or 36. Let's find the lowest common multiple of 24 and 36 using prime factorization. Oh, I was gonna use a different color there. 36, two squared times three squared. Okay, we need all of 24. So that means I need three factors of two and one factor of three. Now let's look at 36. It needs two factors of two. I already have two factors of two, that's good. I need two factors of three. Eight times nine, the lowest common multiple is 72. Let's look at the lowest common multiple of 18 and 30. So we need all of 18, one, two, and two threes. I need all of 30. We need one, two, we have it. We need one three, we have more than one three, but we also need five. The lowest common multiple of 18 and 30 is 90. Pause your video and find the lowest common multiple of 40 and 56 using prime factorization. So here we need two factors of three for both of them. 40 needs a five, 56 also needs a seven. So what is this? I think it's 280. So what's the rule? What are we going to say? We say that we're going to use all of the prime factors, not just the common ones, but all of the prime factors to their highest exponent. Make sure you memorize that so that you can show me how to do this on your first test. Just a reminder that you do have quizzes due this week. Go to Pearson, check the due dates, make sure you finish them before the due date.